What's up everybody, Andy here, and welcome back to Kit Guru. So, it's 2020, and you're thinking to yourself, I should probably upgrade my mouse. Well, what do you choose? You fancy yourself as a top player, so you want the best, right? But do you really want to spend £150 on a mouse? Today, we are talking about the Asus ROG Chakram. Chakram, Chakram, let us know down in the comments how you say it. So Asus claim that this is a new spin on PC gaming, and it certainly has something I've never seen before. Spoiler alert, it has a joystick. But let's see what it can do and whether or not it's worth that high price tag. So what do you get when you purchase the chat room. Well, first of all, you'll notice quite a nice box, actually. It's well presented. It's a large flip open box, and I actually quite like this. Inside, you have the chat room itself, a USB dongle, a USB extender, a USB cable, a travel pouch, customizable badge, and an accessory box that we'll be looking at a bit later. So taking a look at the mouse itself, my first thoughts on its design and aesthetic is that it's aggressive, contoured, and straight out of a sci-fi movie or game. If there was a seat on the back of it, I could easily say this was a Halo vehicle or something like that. So luckily for the chat room, I love sci-fi. So we have a mainly frosted black transparent shell with gunmetal accents. Now the transparent shells seem to be a running theme with the latest releases by Asus. And I'm a fan of this because the RGB zones underneath glow nicely. And as well, if you don't like RGB, when you turn them off, it hides those zones well. So, you know, something to, to note. The mouse is fully molded for right hand users and the main shell that your palm rests on has a really small detail. A raised part continuing the aggressive lines from the mouse wheel and edges of the left and right buttons subtly blend into the shell and the same can be said for the edges of the L and R buttons as well. This is such a small detail but it really shows that they thought about everything here to keep in line with the theme. Now the left and right buttons are fully molded and they do feel great in the hand. Each button has its own separate shell from the body as well. Now the scroll wheel has a super soft and tactile rubber finish as well as RGB and has a nice resistance too. It's not too loose, it's not too hard either, it's kind of in the middle and I quite like that. And not to forget about the satisfying click of the middle button too. On the right hand side we have a super basic design, a small ROG logo etched into the plastic grips. Now if you've seen any of my previous mice reviews before you know I like textured rubber grips but this does provide enough grip and they get a point for following the line from the right button shell to blend perfectly into the grip. Now I would have rather seen some rubber here though, especially for the price point, but you know, it does work. Now spinning around to the back, we have a raised lip, which has a different material and color. Here's our first sign of that gun metal accent. And this is much glossier in finish than the rest of the mouse. And it's not really an issue for like fingerprints. It's not that glossy uh, because you know, as well, it's underneath. So you're not really gonna be touching it much. It's just a little bit of an aesthetic choice to change it up a little bit. Let's do a 180 and check out the front. We're going super sci-fi here with an RGB zone that spans the entire front lip and spills to the left-hand side, but strangely not to the right. Now this personally messes with my OCD. I'd have liked to see it spill onto the right-hand side too, despite the fact that you wouldn't actually see it in use, but it could just be a personal gripe. Now here we also have a USB-C port for wired use and fast charging. Side note, via USB 3.0 connector, you can get 12 hours of play with just a 15 minutes charge. It also supports QI charging via compatible surfaces for endless wireless play. On the front, we also see our slightly glossy gunmetal accents appearing again too. And these are aggressively designed with etched in lines around the port. Now this accent wraps around the left and right sides as well as underneath. On the bottom we have that gunmetal finish and it takes over here. The etched in lines once again follow from the front grip on the right hand side and more angled areas 
They all tie in with the main theme. We have three huge PTFE glide pads, and next to that we have the usual serial numbers, compliance, and basically all the boring stuff. But towards the top we have two buttons and a switch. And you also have a large section that tells you exactly what they do. So more on connectivity later. Now I've saved the left hand side to last for a reason. Now it has the usual forward and back buttons, some more of that plasticky grip, a really comfortable pedestal for your thumb. And I say pedestal because your thumb is going to be helping you win games here as the Chakram has a fully functional, fully programmable joystick. But before we look at this joystick properly, I want to touch on a couple of extra features too. So the back shell of the chat room is magnetically attached and can be easily removed by putting your nail under the lip just near where that scroll wheel is and just popping it straight off. Now this reveals more sci-fi design choices, lots of angles, glossy accents and aggressive flair. And in my opinion, this is a really nice touch because everything is just tying into that overall theme. Now you'll notice the large ROG circle logo, and this can be popped out easily, indicated by the arrow, and can be swapped out for the included transparent cap for you to attach your own design or logo. Great for repping your guild or clan. My only issue here is that it's not exactly explained how you go about customizing this plate to have maximum effect. So I suppose you could like stick a sticker over it or something like that. But let's talk about the next feature, screwless switch replacement. Now the left and right buttons can be popped off by these cool little sprung loaded tabs. Just lift them up and the button caps pop right off. Now this is by far the easiest design I've encountered for replacing your switches. Remove the caps and the Omron switches are right there. Remember the accessories box? Well inside there you have some tweezers and replacement Omron switches. Nice one Asus, I mean for the price, I definitely expected to see these here. So everything is magnetically fitted here and this made me worry a little bit about rattle but luckily every part fit perfectly and these magnets are strong enough to stop this. There's a very mild uh, scroll wheel rattle but nothing you know to gripe about really. Overall, the build quality is excellent, and again, I'd expect nothing less for this price point. Now, you remember I said about some sprung loaded areas? That's for Asus's new pivoted button mechanism, and this ensures shorter travel distance between the button and the switch. The spring system makes for a rapid return, and all of this is to encourage speed and responsiveness. So this is a pretty hefty mouse, and the thumb support platform really makes this mouse comfortable to use over a long periods of time. I think Asus have done a great job of making every ergonomic sort of design choice here with plenty of grip despite the grips being made of plastic. So grip styles are all comfortable. I'm mainly a fingertip user by default. I like high DPI and small movements made with my fingers instead of sort of moving my whole arm around. So fingertip grip is great here. Claw grip works well too. And it is a large mouse, so even palm grip works fine too. I do get slight pinky drag, but consciously adjusting my grip kind of got around this issue. For the full specifications of the Asus ROG Chakram, such as dimensions, weight, and more, head over to kitguru.net. So continuing on, the Chakram has tri-mode connectivity. This means that you can use the included USB-A to USB-C cable for wired use. Now the cable is braided and does come kinked but those kinks can be pulled out just by running your fingers over them. So next we have 2.4 gigahertz wireless via the included USB dongle and this mode retains support for high polling rate and IPS settings so this is again excellent for gaming. Finally we have Bluetooth support and this mode offers increased battery life but lower setting support so not ideal for gaming. Instead this mode is great for everyday use such as browsing or working with documents and stuff like that. Now these modes Modes are very easy to navigate due to that well displayed button layout on the base of the mouse. Pair button is easy to use for Bluetooth and the slider again to move between all three. So let's jump back over to that unique selling point here, the joystick. So there's two ways to use this 
as an analog joystick, just like on a controller. This is aimed at like flight sims, racing games, and much more, the list goes on. So for me, this is the biggest feature as I personally find racing games, for example, incredibly frustrating when played on the PC with a keyboard and mouse. So the next mode is digital mode, and this turns the stick into four programmable directional buttons. You've got forward, back, left, and right. Now these can be assigned to anything, reloading, grenades, tilting, push to talk, map. You can literally just whatever you want, you can do it. And finally, this is a feature I'm incredibly glad that they've included. The joystick is physically sort of changeable. So inside that accessories box, you can find an extended stick, which is longer and also a flush cover to hide that joystick port if you don't want to use it. Now these joysticks are textured and super tactile. So sadly, you cannot just use the joystick straight away out of the box. You do have to assign it as a controller. So I'm going to show you how to do that via Steam. So let's run into it. So firstly, put the chat room into profile three and you can do this using software or by clicking the DPI button and the scroll wheel button in together. Next, open Steam settings, general controller settings, check the Xbox configuration and generic gamepad bit and then select the chat room at the bottom. Now assign your primary actions to the buttons you'd like and then head down to where it says left stick X and left stick Y. Now this is where you're going to assign the joystick. Press forward or backwards on the X and left or right on the Y axis. Now press escape and save and now you have to return to profile 2 before playing the game on your mouse. So I tested this configuration out on the game Grip and I actually had to purchase this game for review because I don't own any racing games on PC because I'd rather play them on console with a controller. I have to say this experience was excellent. I had so much fun actually driving and steering the car with the joystick instead of just tapping left or right keys on a keyboard. It was super fluid and very responsive. I did assign a few actions to my keyboard such as attacks, handbrake, etc. and I kept the rest on the mouse and honestly if you play driving games on the PC you have to try this out. So I wasn't expecting to have as much fun with this and it is a little frustrating having to assign these buttons, but it's actually worth it in the end because the experience is so much more enjoyable. Like I actually played this far longer than I expected to just to test this out. So the joystick gets a big thumbs up from me because you know, that it just works great. So software wise, Asus now offer the Armory Crate and this is super easy to use. So let's run through it. So firstly, make sure to download the latest version from the support section of the chat rooms page on the ASUS website. Next, in the top left, select device and select chat RAM. First things first, head to the firmware update page and check for updates. Now here we have a very sleek experience. Armory Crate screams ASUS with a black, red and blue design and it's very easy to navigate. The buttons tab lets you assign multiple functions to any button from keyboard functions, multimedia and more. Notice the left and top section. If we click left, this lets you adjust the joystick from vertical or horizontal modes and click the sort of plus looking icon to select the digital mode. And here you can swap from analog to assign you know, those four directions to anything you'd like, like we mentioned earlier. So performance lets you adjust DPI, angle snapping, polling rate, button response, and more. Lighting gives you nine preset effects that you can tweak yourselves. And there is also an option to turn RGB off. Now, personally, I quite like the battery mode because, you know, you actually are constantly aware of your battery life that way. So calibration lets you adjust lift off distance and finally power lets you adjust idle modes and battery alerts via the RGB. So super easy, not convoluted in any way and I think everyone will be able to adjust these settings with ease. So in conclusion, overall, this mouse is excellent. I love the design choices and how everything ties in with itself. The frosted transparent shell and the recessed RGB, the super ergonomic design, the way that they've just thought about all of it together. Like it means a lot to me. <laughs> so even underneath on the bottom and under that exterior shell, you know, it, it all ties in. 
There's minimal rattle and really good build quality with easy to remove switches. The USB here is definitely the joystick and it performs excellently. I don't see this as a gimmick because of its customization and it actually made me enjoy racing games on the PC again well, actually for the first time ever. So for certain users, this could be a saving grace. Now there are a few downsides in my opinion, and personally I'd like to have seen some other form of material on the grips rather than just etched plastic. It looks great, but especially in summer, if you're prone to getting sweaty hands, this might be an issue. I'd like to see some rubber coating here. Having to assign all the buttons, you know, straight away is a little frustrating. It would have been cool to see an, uh, like a button or something like that that kind of set it up as a controller instead of a mouse, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's possible, but you know, it is worth taking that time to configure. And my other concern, which is the major concern, is the price. So £150 for a mouse is <laughs> entirely limiting the chakram to prosumers only. And I think that's quite selfish as the joystick is such an excellent idea. I think everyone should actually be able to benefit from it. Yes, this mouse has great specs as well, but at £150, it's not something I'd even consider personally. If you can justify the price and afford it, then go for it because the chakram is actually brilliant. <laughs> I love testing it out, I just can't justify the price. Let us know what you think of the chat room and will you be purchasing it? If you've liked this review, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, check our merchandise out down below and check out our website daily. So I've been Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one, so thank you for watching.